the fantasy of their day job turns into a living nightmare when the lines of reality are blurred as two B-movie starlets battle movie monsters by day and real monsters by night. Now, if they could only get along with each other. You bitch! When the cameras stop rolling, the real terror begins. I love Lucifer. Created by Susie Singer Carter and Don Priest. Episode 3, Demons, 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 Demons. Directed by Don Priest. Where were we? Hmm, let us see. Ah, yes, the underground parking structure of Larry's loft, where our two heroines are beset by some manner of supernatural, hairy, scabby, bloody, sharp-toothed humanoid who's something other than human. In the grips of this monster, Tanya is paralyzed by horrifying visions of drowning children. Holly tries in vain to drag a bloody, bony being off of her. Stop it! Let her go! He, or it, finally releases my spawn, Tanya, from his grip and the hideous visions. You're making this harder than it needs to be. <sighs> just, just, just listen. Yeah. Okay, but someone is expecting us upstairs. Yeah? Well, well, someone's expecting me downstairs. <laughs> I'm bloody fucking bones. Do you know who I am? Bloody fucking bones? I'm a boogeyman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, whenever I get nervous, I sneeze. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but it's, 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 it's a real medical thing. It's called <coughs> stress-induced rhinitis. <laughs> she fucking with me. Yes, she is. Fuck! What was I saying? That you're a boogeyman. I'm a boogeyman. A boogeyman who's been murdering children for centuries. I'm not, I'm not proud. Why, why did they have to lie? Even the other demons think I'm scum. <laughs> oh, help me. Help me. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Make it in. Please, you have the power. It's your kiss. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me quick, swallow my soul, swallow my soul. What is happening is too terrible to put into words, and yet I am compelled to try. With pus oozing from its mouth, this bogeyman known as Bloody Bones closes in on my poor pigeon. No! Oh, I mustn't look. No! But I am looking anyway, and kisses her. Slobbery pus all over her lips, mouth, and face. Oh, the humanity! Oh, the inhumanity! Oh, that's really gross. I think my poor Tanya would wretch a stomach full of sick at this moment were the path of such endeavor not blocked by the demon's mouth on her own. But then, what is this? The being suddenly shrivels and darkens like burnt candy floss. Nothing remains of bloody bones but a thin pile that looks like it could pass for loose asphalt. Silent, motionless, utterly bereft of singing, Tanya and Holly stare at the pile in shock. Ah, the elevator arrives. Not quite saved by the bell, Tanya remains stricken on the floor. In the elevator is Larry, who takes in the spectacle of Holly and Tanya's fearful and icarus state. Not bad, girls. Not bad at all. 
We, now, in the parlance of cinema scenarios, smash cut to Larry's loft living room later. Tanya and Holly have showered. Not together, not in this episode anyhow. Cleansed of the residual slime and filth of bloody bones, my recovering sausage and her delightful foil Holly collapse on a sofa that looks like a snow leopard gave its life to upholster it. Utterly naff. I never claimed that having class was one of Larry's stronger traits. Further evidencing such are the matching fluffy white robes monogrammed with the letter L in calligraphy, which he has donated for the ladies to wear. But the attentions of Tanya and Holly are captivated by a word that Larry has just sprung on them whilst I have been telling you all this. Demons! Exciting, isn't it? I mean, not only did I cast you together in a movie, I've arranged for you to play roles infinitely more important as real-life bona fide demon hunters. What the F are you talking about? Oh, you're going to love this. It's ridiculously high concept. Check it out. Two B-movie starlets battle movie monsters by day and real demons by night. You can't write that shit. You're making my stomach hurt. Ugh. Did you start using again? Do you know what just happened? A disgusting disease street bum just molested me. And then he shriveled into ashes like a burnt marshmallow. I would like a doctor. Relax, T-Bone. You're going to be fine. I'm your agent. Trust me. Okay, hear me out. That wasn't a bum. It was a boogeyman. You said we're demon hunters. It was a demon. You said a boogeyman. It was. Demons a boogeyman? No, boogeyman are demons. What killed Frankie? A boogeyman or a demon? A zombie. You said demons are boogeyman. Enough. Listen, I got good news and bad news for you. The good news is you were not molested by a bum. The bad news is you were molested by a boogeyman. Oh, I feel better now. Ow! Holly, did you just pinch me? Just making sure this isn't a dream. You're supposed to pinch yourself, freak. Come on, pay attention. All monsters are demons. Boogeymen, zombies, werewolves, mummies, vampires. And that's just universal. So, Frankie... Yeah, my bad. Kevin. Little bastard. He's been hocking me for a part for years. I knew it. Not to be racist, but you can't trust a little person. Little liar. Vegan, my ass. What the F? Oh, my God. What are you talking about? He ate Frankie? Ew. That's disgusting, Larry. Oh, please, Tanya, you should be thanking me. How do you think all that dirt on you gets into the rumor mill? Deep throat. More ways than one. Frankie, that a hole. Exactly. You're welcome. Okay. So the boogeyman, Bloody Bones, is a demon who's been drowning children for 500 years. I saw children drowning! Probably your powers. You You're did? You're both getting powers. It's in the contract you signed. Don't know how you both missed that. Uh, let's see here. Yada, 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 yada. Here. Powers acquired shall be based on negotiations between agent Larry Steinman and hiring party. A signed partner shall receive powers party pursue in necessity, but not in individual skill. Yep. Crystal clear. Tanya, you can see the evil in the entities you touch. And Holly, you can smell evil. The smell? This is crazy. (gasps) What are you doing? I'm writhing in pain. My stomach, it really hurts. Indeed, Ah. Tanya tries to stand, then collapses to the floor. A tremendous wave of pain courses through her belly to her very core. Ah. She tries to stand again. The pain forces her back onto the sofa, shuddering in agony. Larry displays his caring nature by ignoring her pain. Wow, listen to this. When the two of you scream in harmony, your enemies will be paralyzed. Then there are the powers you share. When you're in combat, your strength and fighting skills will be amplified. Your powers will increase with every battle, allowing you to become a... Wait, scream? That's Uh, weird. You're a scream queens. Angels love their irony. Well, I wonder how the angels will feel about this splendid satire. Truth be told, Holly is absolutely incapable of producing anything resembling a scream. A bit of a nuisance, really. Holly can't even hone a simple howl. The poor thing suffers from PTSD or post-traumatic scream disorder. Yes, of course. I will explain. 
You see, what Holly is reticent to share is that her infliction began after an innocent but unfortunate incident during an apparent slumber soiree tradition, as it were. At the rather impressionable age of ten, our young Holly and several other charming <laughs> young girls in their gym jams stood cramped in a small bathroom and crowded around a mirror above the sink. The room dark, as the girls attempted to summon the spirit of one Bloody Mary by chanting her name over and over and over. I believe in Bloody Mary. I believe in Bloody When a ghostly vision appeared in the mirror, the chants turned into quite terrifying screams. But as soon as the light was switched on, the girls turned their attention to Holly. Holly! What is she doing? Holly! Stop, Holly! Stop! To see her blood-curdling scream punctuated with a loud... But alas, she could not scream, nor would she again after that regretful event. Oh dear me, there are very few things more beastly than a pack of prepubescent cupcakes. That said, it seems an uninvited, highly malevolent intruder has made itself at home in my delicate daughter's- Mother ever! Ooh, ah, worry! And this is kind of hot. The only way you can defeat a demon is by stealing its demonic essence with a kiss. Tanya's stomach visibly bulges, throbbing, rocking of its own accord. She appears 15 months pregnant with some horrific sprog not of this realm. Oh, that makes sense. When Bloody Bones kissed you, he left his body and is squatting in yours. Get it out of me! Tanya flings herself onto her back with abandon, spreading her legs wide as to give birth to... something. Jesus Christ, Tanya! You're wrong! That, that's just wrong. What are you doing? Help me! Oh, for God's ah. sake, woman. Please, pull yourself together and close your legs! 1980s called. They want their bush back. They'll exchange it for your dignity, which you left there. Shut up! I want this alien face hugger out! You're doing great, honey. Keep breathing. Just... Get it Larry, out. do something! Get it out! Oh. Tanya, calm down. Once you get a few of these under your belt, the pain won't be nearly as excruciating. I hate you. This is all your fault! Copy that. But the screaming is not helping anything, especially me. Larry opens a simple, inconspicuous drawer, and from it he removes what I can only call a monstrosity. A small monstrosity, but a monstrosity nonetheless. A leech-like creature, one and a half feet long, lumpy, mottled, slimy, and wriggling in Larry's composed hands. Tendrils stretch out from it, reaching and probing and grasping for Tanya. It's all too much for poor little Holly, who, after sneezing, faints dead away. Larry turns his attention to address the leech-like thing in his arms. Hungry, baby? What the F is that? Something to make you feel better. Holly awakens to see Tanya as she backs away from Larry, away from the nightmarish thing that he holds toward her. Tanya is cornered, and the leech protrudes a long, pointy tube, the end of it chomping in Tanya's direction like something out of one of her more derivative low-budget monster movies. Ah. Poor Holly, Achoo. on the floor once more. Bon appetit. No, no. The leech leaps out of Larry's hands and attaches itself to Tanya. Ah. It wraps itself around her, tendrils digging in, plunging, and stabbing through her flesh into her chest. Oh, be brave, Tanya! Calm down. Calm down! 
Calm down! That's what you got to tell me! Calm down! My poor sausages, screams and thrashing have no effect on the leech, which gets fatter and fatter as it sucks, slurps and siphons. Something out of Tanya's body. When it seems the leech has grown so much it will explode, it stops and drops away from Tanya to land on the floor. It sighs and gently throbs in a manner that seems content. Larry holds up the leech, squeezes it, and a vaporous image of bloody bones escapes. And now, I take my 10%. A brilliant lining from the vaporous image peels off and surrounds Larry. For a moment, Larry glows, pulsing with energy, then his face rejuvenates. The age lines around his eyes, mouth and forehead become smooth. That's bloody extraordinary. I, I mean, if one needed something like that. Ah, there we go. 55 my ass. Larry, your face. Oh, yes That's it is. That's amazing. What do you think, Tanya? You son of a bitch. I will kill you. I'm gonna kill not you. Not the face, not the face. You're not an agent. You're a pimp. You say tomato. Find yourself two other demon hunting hookers to satisfy your youth obsessed narcolism. And I know that's the wrong word, so shut up. We are through. I don't think you appreciate just how noble a delegation this is. Do you realize how much good karma you're about to bank? And look, look at the contract. You don't have to be demon hunters forever. You only have to stop one demon to fulfill your obligation. We did that. We're done. Not just any demon. A particular demon. Tartaros. Tartasaurus? Tartaros. That's an ancient hell. It's supposed to be older and lower than Hades and manifests as a deity. Holly, what the, what the, what the F? I read a lot of YA. You just have to hunt this Tartaros. Let's see. A demon who will be disguised as someone innocent and unassuming. Oh, that's clever. After you capture its life force, the most powerful warrior of good will arise and take over the battle against evil. Why doesn't the most powerful warrior of good arise now? Because, yep, that's what it says. Well, we don't want to be demon hunters. Because. You are. I'm a movie star. Got it? Movie yeah, star. Yeah, we're actresses. Oh, I see. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm a little taken aback. I thought you'd be thrilled. Anyway, you've been chosen. The contract has been signed. You already have your powers. And Tartaros is going to come after you. So, it's like hunt or be hunted. Nothing I could do about it now. Yeah, I never... You actually read your contracts? But I never signed well, any I'm contract like that. I'm reasonably sure, to the best of my knowledge, I never signed any contract like that. Your contract gives me power of attorney. Jesus, I thought you'd love this. Your whole life has been in horror. You spent years and years and years and You'll years battling it. monsters in your movies. This is the next logical step for your career. Stopping the forces of evil from ravaging the world. I don't wanna. This sucks. You suck. Oh, actually, you do. <laughs> Wait, get it? Ah, you'll laugh later. Anyway, good to see you, but I have important things to do. Oh, you'll know. It's a freaking demon. Wait. They're all narcissists. How will we know it's Tartaros? The cut calling the petal black. Oh, and last but not least, you are the most powerful when together and most vulnerable when apart. So the two of you must stay together. Stay together? All the time? No. Absolutely not. Uh-uh. I have a life. Not without her. Thanks for the visit. You can let yourselves out. Come back after you've defeated Tartaros. And don't forget to bring back the robes. And Tanya. Cot? Petal? How? My most reluctant little girl, currently reluctant in many ways and for many reasons, brings Holly to her apartment with great, great, 
reluctance. Lucy! Whatever. Come here. Aw, oh, look who got out of the bathroom. <laughs> look. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh. Your place is amazing. It's so eclectic and yet totally tasteful. Seriously? I love all the Not posters. Even. It's what like wallpaper. Are, are these all the films that you've starred in? I don't know. Planet Cuckoo, I think. Of course, these aren't I've all been your asking movies. Myself the very same I've just thing. never hung out with a movie star before. How did this happen? You know what? All things considered, if we have to be going through this, I'm glad Stop. that we're going to do it together. We're not I having mean, a slumber party. As wacky here. We're not as everything besties. is. Today has be been nothing less than bizarre. And, and, and as if that's not enough, I somehow have a roommate and a dog. I don't know why this is happening to me. I'm going to go to sleep. And when I wake up, I'm going to find this was all one big effed up dream. There's the couch. I'm going to bed. Wackadoo. And off to sleep they go. Or try to. After all, the newly christened soul suckers are going to need all the collective strength they can levy to rise to the occasion of battling demons. Or I am afraid they will perish horribly in their endeavor. I must discover which will happen. But I'm afraid I will not find out. And neither shall you. Until next time.